Hello everyone, and welcome to our channel. I'm Jody, and today I'm gonna to be showing you more about using your projector for sewing. Take a minute and hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. Previously, I went over some of the basic information and terminology related to using a projector for sewing. Now that some of that technical nitty gritty is out of the way, it's time to get down to the fun part, which is actually using it to cut your fabric to sew a garment. If you need a refresher on the basics of using your projector for sewing, you can find that over here. Before we get started on a new project, I wanna mention one really important thing to remember every time you switch on your projector, and that is to make sure you do a quick double check that everything is still calibrated and working correctly. I keep this gridded calibration file open on my computer all the time. And every time I open a new pattern file, I also open up this and double check that it is still matching the grid correctly on my cutting surface. It takes just an extra minute or two, but it's worth the headache in case something has gotten out of whack with your projector. If you notice that the grid on your cutting mat is not matching up with this calibration file, you'll need to double check that everything is still level and all your settings are still correct. Most times you won't have to tweak anything at all, but sometimes you may just need to re-level something a little bit. I know within the past year, I've only had to recalibrate one time. Most of the time you won't need to tweak anything at all, but it's still a good idea to do that double check just in case. I have only had to make an adjustment one time in the past year, and that was when my stand had accidentally gotten bumped. All I had to do was re-level my projector ever so slightly, and I was good to go again. Every other time I've switched on my projector, everything's been fine, but I still do that double check just in case. So now that we've double checked that our projector is working like it should in general, it's time to get started on our project. I have my pattern file open and you can see that I'm cutting out the Tammy Revolution hoodie, which is a projector file. So it has this one inch grid. I will then use that one inch grid to also double check that it matches up to my cutting mat. Always make sure that you have set your zoom percentage correctly. You can see that I have my particular zoom percentage written down in bold letters over here so that I remember every time I open a new file to change my Adobe Zoom percentage to match that. Since this is a projector file, it has that one inch grit and I can easily compare it to my cutting mat. If this were an A0 file or something similar, I would just use the two inch box and measure that to compare. And I can use that two inch box to make sure that it's measuring correctly on my cutting mat. I've also unchecked any unnecessary layers and only kept the sizes that I need. Since I'm grading between two sizes, I have kept both of those checked. Once I've made sure that the grid matches up to my cutting mat, I'm also going to uncheck that grid so that it's not distracting when I'm actually doing my cutting. Now that I've made sure that everything is measuring correctly, I'm going to uncheck my grid and then get started with working on my layout. So next I need to work on placement and make sure that um, I have enough fabric for my pattern pieces. So I am going to spend a few minutes just um, shifting my fabric around. Um, I will step over to the computer um, and shift my pattern pieces around. You'll see as I step over here and move my mouse around, my pattern pieces move around from my projector. I'm going to spend a minute just going back and forth between uh, my computer and the fabric here. I'm gonna mark a few places with pins just to make sure that I am um, have enough fabric for my pattern pieces. So I'm um, just gonna spend a few minutes doing that. So I just spent a few minutes going through, making sure that I had enough fabric here to fit all my fabric or my pattern pieces that it's on, and it looks like I do. So I think we're good to go. If you're getting value from this video, hit that like and subscribe button and join the family. Now I can begin laying out my fabric to be cut. If I'm making something new, I'll take a few minutes to shift my fabric around and scroll the pattern around my screen to work through a good cutting layout. Sometimes I'll use a washable marking pen or some straight pins to mark some of the borders of my pattern pieces so that I can get a rough idea of how much space I have to work with. Then I can move on and check spacing for the next piece. After I've gotten comfortable with my cutting layout and a game plan, it's time to actually cut. I personally need to add length and grade at the waist of my patterns, so I'll show you how to do that. Since pattern niche patterns include a lengthen and shorten line, 
It's super easy to just mark where you need to add your length and then shift your fabric around. And grading is just done the same way you would with paper patterns, which I'll show you how to do too. So starting with one of your bodice pieces, you'll notice I have my fabric folded along the fold line and all I'm gonna do is mark where I need to add my length. So I'm going to mark using a washable pen. I'm going to mark on the length and shorten line. I'm going to mark at both the fold and over here on the side seam. Then I need to mark where I need to shift my fabric to. So since I usually add about three quarters of an inch to my tops, I'm going to measure three quarters of an inch over here and mark at the side seam. And then I'm going to mark over here on the fold as well. And this is just to help me line it up when I am shifting my fabric around. So I have my two marks and you can use either uh, disappearing ink or some sort of clip or something to mark those points. And all I'm going to do is begin cutting and I'll show you when I shift my fabric um, to make it longer. Now I'm gonna begin cutting um, at the top of the back bodice piece up here. Um, and I'm also gonna show you how I grade. Um, so you'll notice I have two different size lines shown here. So I'm gonna start with, um, my bust is the smaller size. So I'm gonna start at the top up here, uh, cutting out the smaller size. And then I'm gonna, as I work my way down, I need to grade out to the larger size at the waist. So I'm gonna make sure as I get down here near the waist um, and as I'm doing my lengthening, I'm gonna be grading out as well. So starting at the inner line for the bust, I'm going to slowly mic my way down. And as I get to this lengthen line, I'm gonna go just past the lengthen line to where I have that second mark. And I'm gonna stop cutting and you'll see I'm starting uh, to grade out at this point. So I'm starting to make my way out to that outer line. So now I need to shift so that I can add that length. I think it's easier to just shift my entire cutting mat on top of my table instead of trying to maneuver the fabric because um, it can get a little wonky. So all I'm gonna do is take my entire cutting mat and shift it a little bit. You'll see just ever so slightly I'm shifting it. And I am now going to line up, I'm gonna keep my edge on the fold line over here. Um, and I have shifted, this is my mark that is now lined up with my lengthen line. Same over here and you can see that I have this extra length on here now. So all I'm gonna do is finish cutting out, staying on this outer line for the grading and then coming back into the smaller size at the hips because I need to grade back in for my hips. And then cutting across the bottom edge. So you'll see all I did, um, just to go over that again, is started cutting um, down to where the length in line was, cut past it, shifted it up to add that length, and then did my grading at the same time. Came from the inner size out to the outer size and then grade it back in just like I would do if I was using a paper pattern. Um, if you need to shorten a pattern, you would do just the opposite. You would, you would mark, in this example, you would mark above your length and shorten line. You would cut to that and then shift your fabric the other way to shorten it and then continue cutting. Um, so that is how you would do um, some lengthening and shortening of your bodice pieces. The same thing would work for um, sleeves, if you need to lengthen and shorten sleeves um, or other pieces, you can grade and lengthen um, just by shifting your fabric around and doing it that way. So I'm going to um, take a few minutes to cut out the rest of my pieces. Um, I will do this same grading and lengthening on the other bodice piece. I don't need to add any length to my other pieces or grade the other pieces, so I won't do that on those. But um, you will see me lengthen and grade on the other bodice piece, and then I'm just gonna spend some time cutting out the other pieces. I will go ahead and do that now. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lengthen and grade my other bodice piece.
and you'll see I've stopped at my mark that's just below my lengthen line and I'm going to shift everything again, line up my line and I'm also grading, making my way out to this larger size for the waist and then grading back in at the hips. All right, I've got my two bodice pieces cut out now, back and front. Uh, now I'm going to cut out my sleeves, my pocket, my cuffs, and um, my hood or cowl. Okay, now I've got one sleeve cut out and I need to mirror my next sleeve. So what I could do is just flip my fabric over and make sure that I'm cutting on the other side to get a mirror image, um, which would be fine on this fabric because it's easy to see my lines on this fabric, but if it were a busy print, that might not be so easy. So what I can do is use my projector. So what I'm going to do is keep cutting on the same side of the fabric. I was cutting on the wrong side. I'm going to continue cutting on the wrong side of my fabric. Um, but what I'm gonna do is use my projector to mirror the image um, that is being projected. That way I don't even have to flip my fabric over. I can have the projector do that. So I need to go through a couple steps on my projector, um, go through a couple menus um, to do that. But you can see, you'll see my image flip here in a second when I get that. Um, flipped, so just a moment. Okay, so now you can see this has been flipped. So now I will be cutting out um, a mirror image from my last sleeve that I cut. So if I lay that sleeve down, you'll see that I will be cutting um, a mirror image just by flipping it on my projector. I'm gonna maneuver my fabric around to be more efficient. And last but not least, I have my pocket piece to cut and then that will be it for my pieces. All right, I've got my pocket piece. I have my two hood pieces, mirror images. I have my two bottom band pieces. I have my two cuffs, my two sleeves that are mirror images and my back bodice and my front bodice. So now all my pieces are cut and it's time to assemble. Now that I'm done cutting out all my pieces, I'm ready to sit down and sew them up. Since I didn't have to take time assembling all my paper pattern pieces, I'm able to be a lot more efficient with my sewing time. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something about using a projector for sewing. We'll see you next time.